This is 40K Today, the 40K news show that loves every faction equally, except Tao. No one loves Tao. Hello and welcome to 40K Today. This is your daily 15-minute news, views, and interview show that covers the entire hobby of Warhammer 40,000. I'm your host, John Damaris, and today on the program, the denizen of the dark himself, Archon Skari, one of the best players in Canada, stops in to tell us how to get the most out of your Harlequins post-Psychic Awakening. But before we get there, we talk with Delio Pera, who just won a short story competition being run by Cold Open Stories. But first, a little bit of news. The first thing we need to do is tell you, go enter our huge 40K prize giveaway. Along with Nick Nanavati and his team at The Art of War, we are giving away $5,000 U.S. dollars worth of prizes from a host of amazing sponsors. All of the details are on our Facebook page, or go to 40kprizes.com to enter. The more you do, the more entries you get. It's that simple. The link is in our show notes and on our Facebook and Instagram pages, in case you can't find it. By the way, while you're scrolling on our Facebook page, we're running a bit of a poll right now and looking for the answer to this question. Are you superstitious? Do you ditch your dice when they go cold? Do you have a good luck charm or a pregame ritual? Uh, we've had some pretty interesting comments right now. It looks like the poll is going about 40-60. 60% of you saying, eh, you don't have any of that superstitious stuff. Uh, some of the best comments, here's a good one. Alex says, bad guys go into isolation on some out-of-the-way piece of terrain to think about what they've done. All others get set up with sixes up, up to better train them to avoid the fate of their bad dice comrades. And Aaron says, never blame the dice. That said, I will send a bad diet to die jail. <laughs> so there it is, folks. Uh, go ahead, jump in the conversation. It's It's been a lot of fun. Okay, let's get on with the show. Let's step into another universe. One of the very best parts of the 40K universe is the lore. It's so vast, and it's really cool to explore it in fun and different ways. From reading the books to enjoying the video games and now looking forward to the new Eisenhorn TV show, I mean, there's just a million ways to engage with it. Well, Cold Open Stories gives us yet another fun and engaging way to bring 40K into your world. This week, we get to speak with Delio Pera, who just had his short story published by Cold Open Stories. Our own Steve Joel sat down with Delio. Delio, thanks for joining us on the show. Really appreciate your time. And uh, congratulations on, are we going to say winning? Is that what we say? Winning, a, winning the competition, winning the contest? I, I guess so. Yeah, there was no prize per se, um, just be getting first place and getting published. But that, that was prize enough for me. It was the first contest I've ever done like that. Is it really? This is the first time you've entered a story into a into a short story competition. Uh, I think yes. I think I entered a poem a while ago just for the the heck of it. I saw a local library that did a thing, but um, yeah, I think this is the first story that I put into a contest. Yeah. So let's talk about the story in a second. We'll get to that, but what I want to start with the beginning, which is I think your entry into 40k and your understanding of the law. Are you a big reader of 40k books before this point? Uh, not terribly. I've only really got into 40k in the past eight months or so, but wow. I definitely, I definitely like the lore. There's the gaming side, the painting side, the building side, and then the lore side. And I'd say of those three. It's the lore side and the storytelling side of the 40K universe that has uh, drawn me in the most, for sure. You also do a thing uh, on your own podcast where you read 40K stories. Is that, have I got that right? That's, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So that started, um, I think it was about four stories into the Psychic Awakening thing. They had just, I think they started that, what, last August of 2019. So I kind of got into it maybe a month or two after that. And I, as, kind of diving into the lore and watching a lot of YouTube videos. There's tons and tons of them, but I, I didn't see anybody doing too many stories. And I think that's partly due to Games Workshop saying, you know, hey, we don't want you reading our stuff. But I kind of think that the stuff that they're putting out for free on their website was fair game. And I've started doing these critiques of the stories and the writing of them more for myself to just kind of learn, hey, can I find the errors here or the good stuff here? And where is it? And yeah, it's, it's, I, I never really intended to do narration, but it's turned into a thing. And I've been told a few times that I have a halfway decent voice. So I thought, hey, let me give this a wing. And it, it's been received well. Now, let's talk about the story itself, her name, mm. wh which uh, I've read through twice now. And I love it. And there's so much in there that I want to kind of um, pick your brains about. But let's start with where the idea came from. Okay, well, that is very easy because they, for the fast fiction contest for April, they made it very simple that you had to have something 
themed around the, the, the word that they had. And for April, that word was reclaim. So how you can interpret that in any number of ways. But the first thing that came to my mind was somebody that wanted their name back. And then as I kind of pondered that a little bit more, I saw a girl that had somehow lost her name. And I thought that'd be, that's a really important thing to somebody to have a name. And, and then I had to think, well, why, how had she lost this name? Well, why didn't she have a name? How could somebody lose their name? And the, the, planet that I set this on, the Shrine World of Palma Alternum, is one that I had uh, visited before in my previous submission to Cold Open Stories called Between the Lines, about a sister of battle traveling these subterranean libraries that run for hundreds, if not thousands of miles. They're just collections of books and scrolls, many of them just lost and forgotten. And so there's just these endless libraries. And I thought, well, let's go back to that planet. I had a lot of fun writing that one. And we'll have a girl just this lowly outcast girl that there's only so many names that this planet or that the sister hospitalers can give out in a day. And this girl, she was one of the unlucky ones. They'd ran out of names. So all she got was a number, but she didn't even have that number because it turned to mush because she was left out in the rain. But she was able to figure out who was born right before her, the last girl to get a name on that day. So she hunts this girl down to reclaim what she thinks is rightfully hers, which I mean, it kind of isn't, but that's not how she sees it. No, a hundred percent. And the way she gets it back is, is, uh, <laughs> is great, you know, gruesome, but great. Um, and th there are some ideas in there as well that I am now a bit like you, I've only been in the game for a, a couple of years and I've read some law, but not a lot of it is space Marine law. So it's sin seed. Is that your creation or is that, uh, something you've read about previously elsewhere? No, it's so totally my own creation. I, I, um, yeah, I just thought, you know, there's probably some weird funguses and molds that would grow on some books. And so these were holy texts, but then you, you take a holy text, you get a mold that's on it. So it's this decaying thing growing on a holy text and you press it into this weird oil and then it turns into sin seed oil. So I, right. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just thought it was, and it, it just, it, with most of my writing, I don't plan anything out. I just start <laughs> typing and then this stuff comes out. Yeah. Yeah, often that's the best way. Listen, I want to uh, first of all congratulate you on on placing first in this. Secondly, congratulate you on getting something published, which is something a lot of people mm. never have, have achieved. And uh, on just on the quality of the story, I love a lot of the ideas in it and the way you describe the libraries and the way you're touching on a world that you've obviously visited before and are really familiar with, and you make us familiar with it too. It's a really clever story. It's beautifully told, and it's a deserved winner. So congratulations. Well done. Um, Thank you. And we're really encouraging people to go to Cold Open Stories. I've got to say I'm a big fan of everything they do. Go and have a read of Delio's story and all of the other short fiction. Have a listen to the audio dramas. It's really quality stuff. Delio, thanks for your time. Of course. Thank you. That was Steve Joel and Delio Pera. Make sure you check out Delio on his Para 9 podcast. Link will be available, as always, in the show notes. Next up on the program, we dive deep into the muse of the 40K universe, the Harlequin. Today's episode of 40K Today is brought to you by Frontline Gaming. Frontline Gaming is a one-stop shop for all your Warhammer hobby needs, discounted products, American-made gaming mats and terrain, and a full line of miniatures painting service and daily hobby content. And this can all be found at FrontlineGaming.org. Welcome back. Archon Skari has been professionally producing all kinds of amazing 40K-related content for a good deal of time. He's one of the good guys, and I was lucky enough to sit down with him and get his impression on the Harlequins after their White Dwarf update from A Psychic Awakening. All right, Denison of the Dark, Archon Skari. Were you as excited as everyone else seems to be about the new Harlequin buffs that are coming out in White Dwarf? Their Psychic Awakening, as it were? Laughingly so. Yes, I was. Okay. Very excited. Perfect. Why don't you highlight a few of the things in there that you think are going to make a big difference and from a competitive standpoint, like maybe give us your top three things that Harlequin's got, and then we can talk about some of the other notable mentions. Top three things. Uh, the first is the utility of the characters has increased exponentially, whether you're running a death jester that can now deny overwatch or do multiple hits on larger units to make it more effective against larger horde style units or a shadow seer for example that can now not only shield your units from harm or just infantry but with the new stratagems shield vehicles and bikes uh with the minus one to wound aura as well as increasing that defensive aura and even making the enemy rangers like enemy weapons be out of range which i think is is crazy powerful in in a game of maneuverability and in a game of inches um 
when it comes to keeping your Harlequins alive, which y- it used to be a big problem. Okay, uh, so these are all all like uh, special abilities that you can sort of trade in their bone stock special abilities, like uh, the Shadow Seeders. Is it minus one to wound? So uh, infantry but, around him normally. And correct. Then, However, becomes- there is a stratagem where you can spend a command point and keep your bonus and add an additional bonus in on top of the bonus that they have. Okay, so you you have some flexibility. A quick question: Do you think that you, when you you'll choose those those things at list design, or do you get to choose them when you sit down on the table and see what you're playing against? If you choose to replace their special rule, um, the pivotal role becomes part of the army list. If you choose to spend the command point to add it to their existing uh, rule, then that is done pre-game. Okay, cool. So that makes sense. So then you you have you develop your basic strategy, and then if you sit down, you have some flexibility. Ability, you'd be like, well, I'm going to need X, whatever X is, and you can just add it on the fly, like you know, adding a relic for someone else. I mean, they have to denote their warlord typically, but this is like adding additional. So I like Correct. that. That's cool. Yeah, yep. you might not always want to give your solitaire an additional minus one to be hit. However, every once in a while, you know, he's going to get stuck in, or he's play- facing uh, units that have lots of uh, lots of attacks, and you want to sort of lower the risk. You can pay that extra command point, so he keeps his blitz and also gets a minus one to be hit. Oh, also, you could give him the suit of hidden knives. And yes. giving him just a flat out minus one is pretty gross on that, right? So explain that interaction for people because that's actually kind of cool using one of their original relics. So for all you uh, 40K Today fans out there, that's what we in the professional scene call butt knives, where um, you <laughs> make a Harlequin so hard to hit, a Harlequin solitaire so hard to hit, that the unit that attacks the solitaire kills themselves. So the suit of hidden knives is every time an enemy unit basic an enemy model rolls a one to hit in the fight phase on a two plus that model's unit suffers a mortal wound which means you can make a harlequin <laughs> you can make a a um a uh a solitaire. solitaire minus one to be hit with his new pivotal roll in addition to giving him a uh, a minus one to be hit with uh, lightning fast reflexes, giving him an additional minus one to be hit with a psychic power, and then casting a minus one to hit on the enemy unit that is going to be attacking uh, the solitaire. Um, <laughs> what's, and, what, what's really funny about that is, too, you can you can cast it on the unit and then charge him with the solitaire. He kills some, and they don't have the option to not swing back. And, correct. And in that case, for every one, two, three, four, or five they roll, they're going to take a mortal wound on a two plus. So. Correct. Because, it, you know, uh, modified, it becomes a one, and therefore a two plus. So I've seen entire orc units kill themselves when enough of them have had to attack the the solitaire <laughs> which is uh is one of those sneaky shenanigans and i feel like this harlequin update only serves to enhance this already uh, bag of tricks that they can just sort of use that is becoming more and more relevant in the competitive scene cool well let's go over a couple more highlights what, what else did so they got customization of the characters that's pretty cool Gave a good example of that. What else did they get? The other thing they get is some really cool movement uh, shenanigans. Uh, and movement in this game is one of the most powerful things you can use. Movement is one of the only things you can control, which is why it is so powerful. It doesn't have to do with dice. It doesn't have to do with you know averages. Um, it is something you can pick to move something. So anything that messes around with that tends to be very, very powerful, whether denying movement or enhancing movement. One of the coolest um, new stratagems that Harlequin's got allows a unit to move or fall back in place of consolidating, which means that you could potentially have a unit of, say, Harlequin jet bikes charge in, before the enemy unit gets to attack, right when that unit consolidates, you spend the command points to then run away with the jet bike unit, which means that unit that you attack never gets to hit you back, number one. Number two, it can, can, be, it can be combined with the double fight stratagem as well. So you can have a Harlequin unit charge two completely different units, attack the first unit, spend the command points to essentially move away from the combat, and then 
spend the double CP, uh, the double attack to attack the second unit <laughs> before either unit has gotten to a swing at them, and then move away from that second unit as well, or wrap, or whatever it is they need to do, which means they can be bouncing around all over the place, and that sort of movement stuff is crazy good. So I think... In a word, if we were going to use a word to describe the new Harlequin book, it sounds like shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> um, is there a rule that the game needs to follow? Harlequins can break it. So I love it. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here first, folks. The Harleys got their shenanigans, and you should be watching it out on a table near you. That's Archon Skari. Great stuff about those Harlequins. And you can find him uh, in, our li- in our show notes because he's got a lot of content out there for you to check out. Okay, folks. It's that time. Let's get pumped for the model of the day. It's the, the model of the day, the, the model of the day, the, the model of the day. Today's model of the day is Trajan Valoris, uh, done by James. James captures the grim dark aesthetic perfectly with his perfectly highlighted blacks, reds, and dark purples. He makes an imposing figure on the battlefield, and he certainly looks fierce. You guys should definitely check this out. Uh, The picture is obviously on our Facebook and Instagram. Um, And if you're watching this on YouTube, it probably is being displayed even as I speak. Now, if you have a model that you want us to feature on the show or have you seen a model that should be featured, let us know. Just look us up on Facebook and send a message to 40K Today. We're always on the lookout for really cool stuff to highlight. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. A special thanks to our content producer, Alex Boehner, and our social media ace, Tanya Gates, and our technical producer, Seamus Ronan, for all their hard work once again in putting this program together. If you have anything you think we should feature on the show, please get in touch. If you've got an amazing army or a YouTube channel, a great hobby tip, or even just some amazing 40K content, just find us on Facebook, search out 40K Today, and send us a message. And make sure you join us tomorrow on the show where we speak to yet another 40K super fan, and we talk to an absolutely amazing painter. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, for the 40K Today team, I'm John Damaris, and that's what's happening in 40K Today. 